Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the Apollo Twin and how we could use the stock plugins that's included when you buy an Apollo. So for those of you who have the Apollo Twin, I know you're familiar with it. It has a volume knob to monitor, right? I got the, and then you could do a headphone. Uh, it has two inputs and two stereo outputs. I'm using the monitor output to get live streaming the audio into my live stream. Let me show you a little video on that, how that works. So there's the Apollo Twin. Now we're going to locate either the monitor out or the line out, whichever one you desire. I'm going to get a quarter inch to RCA. So I put some adapters on this red RCA cable, but whatever works, there's many adapters you could use, so this is just one way. I'm taking it from the line out. Now I'm going to get this RCA, the other end, and plug it into another little interface, which is called the Behringer U-Control UCA202. And it's great because it ensures you have a good connection and the signal is very good. So it doesn't degrade it. Now it makes it to where you could get the audio into your smartphone. It has a USB port, so it converts your signal to a USB. And now all you have to do is put the corresponding adapter to it. For those of you who know about the Unison technology, it's so cool. You could emulate any type of gear if you put a channel strip right here. So I got the, um, <laughs> it's the Universal Audio uh, channel strip. Um, and what I'm doing, I'm just basically getting everything to sound how I want to. So I turn the level up a little bit. I turn the, the tube preamp up to plus five. And you know what? It changed the sound of the microphones. Like take for instance right here. I mean, these are two MXLs. They're cheap mics, but I'm getting them to sound good with the miking position I have. If you know a little bit about Unison technology, it changes the impedance of the microphone. Like it's emulating the actual hardware, which it's very exciting. So if I play... I mean, that's a really smooth tube sound, wouldn't you say? This is the Poltec Pro Legacy. What do I have set up? I'm giving a little warmth to 200 hertz. Yeah, that's a nice sound. You see how I could really jack it up here? Isn't that great, you guys? Let's make it a little bit warmer. Now I'm toning down uh, 1K. 1K on this piano is very harsh. I mean, here it is off. That's hurting my ears right now, so I wanna, I wanna tone that down. So here it is again. The Poltec does such a great job with this. Now I could boost 60 hertz, make it a little bit more warm. Here it is off. I'm gonna turn it on. So beautiful, isn't it? I mean, this is insane. There's no latency. I'm running this real time. Um, yes, I could control the bandwidth, so how large the queue is. So I went pretty wide on that. Uh, I didn't do any boosts for the high end. Uh, I mean, just for the heck of it. If we could kick it up all the way to, say, 10 kilohertz. You know, let, let's see. I'll just do a little experimentation. We'll boost that. That's pretty cool. 
Here it is off. The cool thing about the Poltec is you could boost it and attenuate at the same time. Let's try that. Wow. Okay, we have um, a reverb plugin. It's going to get pretty re reverby, folks. Just warning you. Okay. This plugin has a lot of functionality. Look at the <laughs> the presets. We're just going to flip through a couple of these. Church. Wow. You could tame the shape of the room. You see that? Any difference? Any difference? How about the material? Do you want a complete hardwood or water? <laughs> How about complete hardwood? And now we could do resonance. So maybe if you want, if you don't want the bass, you could do that. Table, tain the bass a little bit. So you see how we're sculpting the sound. Timing, right? Hey, hey. I think this is the timing right here. Hey, 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 test. One, two. The mix for solo piano, I don't like too much, so all the way to the left is dry. A little bit. Test one, two. Yeah. Tss, tss. This is great. All right, let's try that. cool thing about the Apollo and doing this is that you could really tailor in your uh, the dynamics, so compression and limiting. There's, there's some other plugins I prefer to use, but we're using the free stuff. If you want to use limiting so you don't have any distortion in your live stream, I'm going to show you how to set that up right now. If you're familiar with the Fairchild, let's tackle this one first. This is the one that's been on the whole time. I have the time constant on three, threshold on six, and now this is just the input, right? I could crank this all the way up, but I probably wouldn't want to do that. I think I had it right there. You see how, how much reduction... See the gain reduction right there? That's about... It's like 1 dB, that's not much at all. So it will get higher if I start slamming stuff. It'll really start to work. Now, how far can I push this thing till we get distortion? That's kind of what you have to find when you're doing a test live stream. You go live uh, pri on only me, right? Set your privacy to that. And then just figure out your settings, dial them in, save the preset, and then put them back up again. That's what I do to make it really easy for me. So um, how far can we push this till we get distortion? Okay. So right now, on, on my live stream, I can't really show you this right now, but on the program I'm using, it's called Switcher Studio. I'm doing that for live streaming. And it has a little VU meter in here, and I'm going to try to push it till I get to just barely, like, almost till red. So, uh, here we go.
that's a that's as far as I could push it till I start getting distortion in my in my in my uh, DAW or the Apollo. So I would probably not go any higher than that. And you could see where my settings are. I'm using the output right here. That's where I'm at. Um, the threshold for this stuff, like the soft knee, hard knee, I just kind of got it at 9, 9 o'clock, going for both. Um, the more you crank it clockwise, the more gain reduction you're going to get from the compressor. So not bad, huh? You want to hear it with the reverb and all that pretty stuff? Let's put all three plugins on and let them rip. If you're interested in seeing me demonstrate more adapters to get audio from the outputs of the Apollo into your smartphone or streaming device, I show you all of that in this tutorial video. So click the link below in the description to get your free video and I show you all the adapters I use and how to hook it up. It might make things a little bit easier for you if you want something other than the Behringer that I hooked up to it.